Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, June 23rd. And the devotional for today says, Let my love stream through you, washing away fear and distrust. A trusting response includes me in your thoughts as you consider strategies to deal with a situation. My continual presence is a promise, guaranteeing that you never have to face anything alone. <clears throat> Excuse me. My children teeth on the truth that I'm always with them, yet they stumble around in a stupor, unaware of my loving presence all around them. How that grieves me. When you walk through the day in trusting dependence on me, my aching heart is soothed, gently bringing gently bring your attention back to me whenever it wanders away. I look for persistence rather than perfection in your walk with me. And the verses for today are Psalms 52 verse 8. And it says, but I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. And Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And Ephesians 4 verse 30 says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. So in this devotional, I was looking at, I always try to look up definitions of words, even though I might know what they mean. So stupor is a state of near unconsciousness or insensibility, and they referred it to like being drunk, how you're unaware of what's going on, even though the context clues of the sentence says that, but that's how people kind of act. You know, there's God there with you ready to help you, ready to be there for you and do whatever. And people are just stumbling around. Um, But this devotional is about letting love stream through you. So we weren't meant to have to live life alone. And I confidently rely on God because of what he has brought me out of in the past and what he has shown me and helped me to overcome all the obstacles that I've dealt with. Um, And then it was saying how he wants persistence over perfection. So I also looked up those definitions, even though I know what both of them are, we kind of have like, if if you really think about it, when we hear words that we kind of know what they mean, you know, but we don't know the exact definition. If we look it up, it kind of brings out like a new awareness to what the word truly means. So persistence is a firm continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. And perfection is the condition, state, or quality of being free or as free as possible from all flaws or defects, which we know it's impossible for us to be perfect. So um, when we strive to be perfect, we beat ourselves up over the little mistakes that we make and we sit there, you know, wallowing in that and all the the issues that we have associated with the mistake and why we made the mistake. And we kind of just like, man, I can't believe I did that. And we just stay in that for so long when we know that with God, God loves us and God forgives us. So if we just ask him for forgiveness, that's that. And then he just forgets about it. Um, We associate not getting something right with discipline or punishment. So when we're striving to be perfect and we make those mistakes, we think we're going to get in trouble because we made a mistake and because we weren't perfect, son. Um, But that's not how God wants us to live. He wants us to move on from our mistakes. That way we can focus on him because if we're, we know we're not perfect. So if we're constantly looking at things that make us imperfect instead of using that focus and determination to to drive us towards God then it's not going to really give us the best benefit so um the other thing that it, it mentioned was how you know persistence is doing something despite of difficulty or opposition so we know that nowadays people have all their opinions all their criticisms and with God we we have to deal with always hearing someone like I've heard not with me but on other Christian um, influencers or whatever they're called on their blogs or their posts people are saying like they're brainwashing their kids or when they have their kids memorize verses they're like oh you're brainwashing them to teach them something that's not real but they 
they say all these things and I'm thankful that nobody's said that to me, but they're are people who deal with stuff like that and it must be hard you know trying to have your walk with God and it's finding all these new ways to teach your children and watch your children grow and people are constantly throwing in their opinions um but we want to trade pleasing people for pleasing God pleasing people doesn't do anything for us because it might get them excited for a few moments but pleasing God gets them excited forever it it strengthens our walk with him He constantly blesses us over and over in our walk, um, whether we're doing wrong or right. You know, even people who aren't Christians get blessed. So we just know that God will always be here for us. And most of all, remember that your walk with God is not a competition. So the person next to you or whoever you've known at church or anybody who you know that is a Christian, their walk with not God is not comparable to yours because you guys are each your own individual person. And God specific, specifically, I'm so tired, you guys. God specifically gives people their own gifts. So you can't compare your gift, which was meant for you, to someone else's gift that was meant for them and think that yours isn't good enough or theirs isn't good enough because God, come on. Come on. Come on. God gives us these gifts to be able to help each other, not hurt each other by thinking that one is better than than the other or trying to like outdo your brothers and sisters. So, um forgive me for being so sleepy during this devotional. Um this is Maui, my son. How are you, Maui? You're four. Oh, I put the microphone over here. When will you be five? Do you remember your birthday? Um, no. Yeah, you do. It's August 21st. Say August 21st. August 21st. And you'll be five, and then you get to go into kindergarten this year, right? I know. Huh? I know. You know? Because you're so smart, right? So anyways, um... You guys have a wonderful day. No, don't touch that. I'm going to go ahead and get on with the rest of my day because I'm just looking at my messy kitchen. What? I want to hear something. You can't hear anything right now. I'm just recording it, okay? And then we can hear it when we're done. Say hello. She's shy. All right, you guys, have a wonderful day today. Enjoy it, and remember that your walk is not a competition. Do something to encourage your brothers and sisters and let them know that stuff that they do for you is appreciated. All right, have a good day. Bye. Bye.